You're listening to Cinema Red Pill. I'm Sharon here with Timothy, Timothy and, and Joel. Yeah, my usual people. And we're going to talk about what we've been watching. Uh, we're going to be doing this more often because they're easier to consume <laughs> mm. and we get to, to cover a lot of ground yeah. and it's fun. So uh, we're going to talk about what we've been watching in the past month and a half or so. I'll start. And I know what, what we will start actually. Okay. We're, going to, <laughs> we're going to start with 27 guns. Ah, so uh, I like I've gone for that one to be like my last section. I'll let it be first. Okay. Cool, you cool, get cool, it over cool. with. Let's get it over with. <laughs> so we watched 27 guns, me yep. and Timothy. A Ugandan will know what I mean when I say it's Bosco's movie, <laughs> which means. <laughs> <laughs> by Bosco, I mean Museveni, President Museveni. And the movie is about him, his his life between 1981 or 1980 up to 1986. Okay. Everyone knows the year 1986 and what it represents. Mm. All Ugandans know at least what that year represents. But it shows his journey to that day when he was sworn into power. So it shows his time in the bush, which he very much likes to refer to, by the way. His time in the bush, which he took spending years struggling, mm-hmm. trying to liberate Ugandans who mm-hmm. are struggling. Okay, I'm saying this in a funny way, it's true. But yeah, these years in the bush, trying to liberate Ugandans from suffering of a lead from the leader, Milton Obote, who was, who's referred to as an oppressive leader. Okay. Yeah. So the movie is done by his daughter. Mm. It's directed and produced by his daughter, Natasha Museveni, mm. and co- Karujire, that's, that's, that's her husband's that's name, husband. and the guy, you a know, yes, mm. co-directed by with that guy. Mm. Okay. So we watched that movie, and I don't know. <coughs> since I've introduced Tim, go first on, on your thoughts. Well, uh, for such as I went into this movie as open-minded as I could be, I, a lot of people were saying it's a propaganda film and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a film, because of course, right now there have, there's been a lot of political discontent in the country. And Uganda of late has been all over Al Jazeera and BBC regarding uh, a certain politician, uh, Robert Chagulani, and the current president having cl- clashes. Bobby Wine. Yeah, Bobby Wine. <laughs> but he prefers being called Rob, uh, Chagulani. Chagulani. Yeah. He's honorable. Yeah, honorable now. He's no longer an artist. Okay, he still is. But anyway, so I tried to go into the movie with a very open mind, and I thought I would go and, aside from what they're presenting to us, which I knew would probably be skewed to a particular angle. Thought I'd probably go and enjoy it for like aesthetics, so just even the work put into the writing, mm-hmm. and it was a terrible disappointment. <laughs> I went in expecting um, something like a political drama or something like even a, almost like a biopic in a way, mm-hmm. or for a biopic for a particular period at least for his life. Mm. And all I got was just all these particular battles, and mm. there were all these how should I put them? What was the word? Captions, yeah, yeah, they keep putting like this day. Ooh. At, in this place, this barracks we attacked here, that's what happens. So next, documenting. Next scene, documenting, basically. I try to miss any step. And, <laughs> and because of being that, the, the best guy let go of all the other rich, I think, interpersonal stories that could have been happening in the bush. Because mm. I'm sure it's there. They could have been like this content, some guys being kicked out early on or something. <laughs> or even just the whole uh, the whole UFM, Andrew Kaira, the way they were presented in the film, yeah. and how the other collaborators of Museveni, the DPs, all the other parties, they basically they didn't say anything much about them. Yeah. So it was basically just a film about a young guy playing Museveni, mm. just going through this process. Because the movie basically begins right before they start the war, right? Yeah. Yeah, right before they show Janet leaving, and it starts it right starts. before they, they, they start the war, and the movie ends right after the war has ended and Museveni has been sworn in. So mm. there wasn't really much. They tried to pack as much of that bush war into the film, mm. and, because, and because of that, they let, they let go of a lot of other detail I feel that could have probably made the film better. Mm. Yeah. yeah Wait, do they do they like proper end with the whole procession through yeah, yeah, the they parliament, just swearing in yeah, yeah. the, the parliament. They even, they even go yeah. on to show the real life swearing in. Mm. But now me mm. I didn't go in with an open mind for mm. sure. Mm. Me I came in ready <laughs> to judge but they made it way too easy to judge because yeah. it's really not good. Yeah. And those scenes that, that Timothy is talking about it's they're so disorienting they are done so badly they take no time he it starts with him doing like a speech to his mm. people yeah and 
then it will progress to another speech without any setup. There were scenes which me and Timothy had mm. to put together ourselves. Yeah. The movie does not even they try not even to end explain there. My thing to editing, any of that. They mm. probably didn't edit it even properly because mm. there are some scenes which would end abruptly and you're like, and you're like what's there's up? supposed to be something here. Yeah, like <laughs> oh, one of the worst things about it which we kept laughing about is how the, the soundtrack was being completely abused. They would the, You would even try to understand the scene by the soundtrack they're, they're giving you like okay. they're making a whole memorial mm. thing happen but mm. they've not told you about it but the music just screams well, oh the there's That's, this yeah. happening so you should feel this way about that scene and it was funny and it was mm-hmm. embarrassing <laughs> that's not how it was so bad yeah. it was so bad but then the thing i which i want to say is that that ending mm. the way it ends and then they they show Museveni all happen. I think that was their sole goal yeah. to get to at point. the end of the day. Let's just get to that part. And they get to it, and I think it's effective. Mm. Yeah, It can actually make you think, ah, oh, so this is the day that our parents hung on to. Yeah. And, and <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's because, <laughs> because, because the way that people are rejoicing and yeah. they're making them Someone seem so, the oh my God, yeah. our lives are never going to be the same. Yeah. And if you even listen to the way people who stick to Museveni, yeah. the way they are, react about that day, you're so, like, so this is what they were feeling. Mm. Okay. This is why they've held on to him for all these years. Yeah. But if their if their experiment was to try to get people like me to care about 1986, this was yeah. a failure. Yeah, I did not feel anything for that. I still I'm like fuck to 1986. That's still how I feel about it. So no. And yes. by the way, a fun game to play is how many people do you know in this movie? Cause trust me, yeah. you're going to see people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yeah. There are so many <laughs> people in our age group who are there. And celebrities, a few there are people on TV who you yep, see. Yeah, even some people who have been on this podcast are in the movie. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's a fun game to play while you're watching. No, but yeah. another thing I just want to point out about 27 Guns was remember we talked about even during the movie how they kept talking, like the whole rhetoric and Museveni's whole ideology, as much as people like to put him as this very wide, old, old, old wise Where's leader. Yeah, yeah, basically. The whole rhetoric. Was just basically how do we get more guns? As in the yeah. title is twenty seven guns, how could we forget and the that? whole movie is just about we need more guns. Yes. and it probably says something about where people see power in the country. Like ah, to have power, you okay. probably need guns because it was the only thing. Museveni wasn't really done justice on an ideological level. Sounds like you, an interesting. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I don't know if it's guns, an guns, intentional guns. thing, no, no, but it might that's be, interesting. I think, might be. I don't know if it's a lack of imagination on the part of the guys who are making it. <laughs> or it was just something that. Mm. came as they're writing the story but maybe it, it could even be something subconscious just to look at guns and the army as a source of power 27 they are very guns. aware of yeah. it and that even we makes you guns. scream like the way he sticks on the army like all the time the he knows how much power you need like mm. the whole time the MacGuffin of the movie is more guns guns more guns more guns, guns, more more guns. guns. and after <laughs> some point time you're like oh my god this man he's trying to do his philosophical thing they make the entire movie stop more guns mm. though we really need more guns though mm. then you're like okay this is exactly how he thinks i think it's telling of the mm. way they rule now yeah. and it's so weird yeah. why would you make us think of that that's not the thing i thought of 1986 yeah yeah damn just, i thought it would be a bit more like to the seven character yeah. just how he was so charismatic for his time but yeah. really well. i'm curious so it, it either of you has read uh, mustard seed i, I read the it. old version the old i have read the revised <laughs> For like, well, I haven't read it, but like from what you read, were mm. there any of those elements? Yeah, no, of course they 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 would try and point out like some particular guys like Eli Tumwine. Mm. There's even a scene where we laughed where even the Besiji where after like guys are <laughs> being shot, they don't show Besiji, but they just they, you just hear someone calling Besiji, Besiji, like to come and basically treat the guys who have been shot. Yeah, but they don't really go deep. But he's even, not a character. No, he's not really. They don't even. Even, 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 yes. even Tumwine, the, I think the only other guy who's really is maybe really Salim Tumwine. Yeah, mm-hmm. two minutes given. No, they're very featuring him in the posters and stuff. Sure who he Salim was. Salim. It was Salim Saleh. Salim yeah, Salim. that has been. It was the guy who was like, because he's the kid bro, he was the kind of the guy who they made this maverick young guy. And he likes to smoke, yeah, guys. Smoke, yeah, make, yeah. Watch him smoke his cigarette. They but really pay a lot of attention to that detail. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it wasn't. They okay. didn't really put any depth into like unpacking all these great men. Mm-hmm. They just. How, how are the, how are the <laughs> action scenes? 
Oh, there were a handful of bullets. I, I'm sure. Oh, their few. bullets are just Wakaliwood bullets, by the way. Yeah, a few. The, their, their visual effects are not good. No, and, yeah. and at least Wakaliwood mm. has the distance to like, yeah. show you the, the gun blast. You get yeah. the action here. It's like it's, you rely more on the sound. Like if you see someone <gasps> in the grass shooting and it's just the sound. It doesn't have the, the muzzle. Bo- they the had muzzle a lot flash. of bomb yeah. money. They bomb, had a lot yeah, of bomb money. But the explosives. Bombs, the explosives were good and many. Mm. They were really milking that part yeah. of it. I at think least they had the legit They could blow stuff up. so. Oh, can we how can we not forget okay. drones? Oh, they had so many yeah, drone, drone shots. shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Drone technology has done our industry a solid. Yeah, that's like a yeah. whole signature you can Drone They really showed us the area shots. But you also have to point out, by the way, like the only thing I actually liked really was the casting. The two leads, Museveni, the guy who plays him, he looks good. Looks like him, mm. and it was Diana Museveni. Yeah, who plays who, his daughter, who plays Janet. Yeah. Okay, and there's also a very striking resemblance. So, mm. for those roles, at least you, you actually believe. Even the guy looks like Museveni in a way. And, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure, he does. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so I think we're done. With 27. Yeah, ten minutes is enough for twenty-seven guys. Yeah, but no, I just want to recommend one other film. Another film for Paul who probably don't vibe to 27 Guns. Yeah. There's a documentary I watched recently called A Brilliant Genocide. Have you heard of it? No. no. It's by, I think, someone called Ebony Butler. I'm not sure if it's a woman, uh, but it's an African American, and they're basically making this documentary about how Museveni, when he, uh, the NRA, when they just come into power, they basically wreaked havoc on people in the north. And that led to basically the, 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 the Yekoni and yeah. Lakwena. So it basically unpacks That's all that. And it's on YouTube. So if you want to see it, oh. check okay. the Brilliant Genocide on YouTube. You'll okay. see that a lot of people say Jusa is in it. The Maos, they're mm. all giving their commentary on that. The oh, 80s, not, not in the 80s in the north. Oh, that dope. sounds really good. Mm. The Brilliant Genocide. Okay, um, now we're going to talk about all the other stuff we've watched. That was yeah. my pick. So Joel, what's yours? What's mine? What okay. have you been watching? Okay, yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> Hard transition. Mm. Uh, so I watched uh, Daphne and Velma, which is a spin off of the Scooby Doo. First week. <laughs> I even watched it the first day. You guys, can we pick things which people I am might do in the beginning <laughs> so that they turn us off at the end? At the end. <laughs> when they start to hear things they don't know about. This is a perfect Timothy opportunity. It, yeah. I think when you have no, everyone's attention, don't, it's a perfect You don't, don't know it. No, but I know it's but, but, but you know Scooby yeah, Doo. Everyone Doe, knows Scooby Doo. Okay. Doe, yeah. uh-huh. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's just, yeah. Mm. Continue. Yeah, so Daphne, Vil- Daphne and Vilma are one of the characters, and this is a crappy sort of spin off movie that's just centered on them alone without Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's two high school girls uh, solving a mystery in their high school, and it's. One of the crappiest things I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> and I knew you hated it. <laughs> no, no, but I, no, but I actually didn't hate it. Um, okay, like I remember mentioning how I liked uh, Gem and the Holograms. Yeah. In 2015, so this one is my Gem and the Holograms <laughs> for this year. It won't. <laughs> it wound up getting so absurd that it was funny, and it's yeah. like really charming and sincere. It's not like a phoned in. Ah, let's make some money. Mm. They, they really believed in all the crappy stuff they were doing. They did it with one heart, and I admire that. And I mm. thought it was sweet. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. I don't recommend this movie. To, <laughs> is it? To was anybody. it released this year? Or is it was called? released this year, direct to DVD. <laughs> is it movie. a live action movie? Live action, yes. And it takes place like in a super techy high school. Well, like okay. everyone is a nerd. It's basically even, a high school even Daphne nerds. Is a nerd. Even Daphne is a nerd, <laughs> except that they're also like these joke sports guys who are yeah. also nerds, yeah. but bullying other nerds uh, like the yeah. nerds. Okay. So there's a lot of stupid stuff like that. Yeah. But it's it's like charming and harmless, mm. and it's it's fun if you have absolutely nothing to watch, <laughs> like absolutely nothing hungover. really. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also, okay. yeah, or super intoxicated, <laughs> okay. like a bunch of things, yeah. Okay. Tim, what's uh, your pick? Did I, did I mention Skyscraper last time? No. No, 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 no you did not. Have you guys seen it? No. no not yet. Not yet. Just seen I don't plan on seeing it. I don't want to see I am so hyped to report. see that movie. I actually watched it, and it was actually, surprisingly, I won't say it's so hyped, but mm. it's actually a well-done movie, <laughs> because it's actually, I think, a co-production between Asia or Europe. You can okay, tell it's not, okay. you can tell it's not like an American film, like a purely American. Probably the Asian market mm-hmm. wanted the rock. 
<laughs> so they had, they had to build this vehicle for him to mm-hmm. be this guy climbing a building trying to save like his with family. Uh, with, with Matt Damon. Was it Matt Damon in that Great Wall? Or who the was Great that? Wall. Okay. Uh, something like, it's something like the Great Wall. But this one is set in America though, is no, it? No, it's set in... It's set in an Asian yes. country. Yes. Damn. That okay. makes sense yes. with, the, with the architecture yeah. and stuff actually. Yeah, so it's set those ends. But it's good okay. because again, for once at least you see the rock because he has a family and a kid and kids mm-hmm. and they're stuck like in this building that is like the most high-tech building but small functioning and you actually see him <coughs> like the actual sticks in this movie you get yeah. and though there's all that corny like those those actually you know those those act, those shoots for the rock like where he's doing something like he's jumping off <laughs> yeah, and yeah, even yeah, the poster yeah. you can see him jumping off like a crane into a building yeah, yeah. it's full of like all these these high yeah, yeah. you know like those kinds of set pieces but mm-hmm. at the end it's very rewarding I'm because so it's, it's kind of working <laughs> towards something that makes sense yeah mm-hmm. uh, another movie I watched Wait. Let me mention one. More. One at a time. Okay, one. Because I have two. You're I going to you're, you're, you're going with the uh, double tap. Yes, double, double, double tap. Not double tap. tap. <laughs> you, no, no double okay. tap. No, 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 no double tap. Oh, oh. You I'll hold my horse. Many, many tap oh, in okay. honor of okay. So my pick is too relevant to yours also. That's why I didn't want you to double tap. Mm. Because it's a genre movie which has a lot of corniness in it. Mm. But I really liked it because it had some freshness mm. freshness in mm. it, which is Crazy Rich Asians. Mm, okay. I really dug that movie. I've actually seen it twice in the theater <laughs> to show you how serious wow. I am about this. I've okay. watched it the first time with my sister. Then I wanted to take my friends and they watched it with them and they really dug it. So it's a really good movie. It's a pure rom-com. They don't show the meat cute, so it didn't have a meat cute. But it mm. has the the obstacle. Every me every couple has an obstacle mm. in a in a romance movie, and the obstacle is the parents. Usually the biggest obstacle. But now this one is with Asian Americans. The, the 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 Asian guy is going back to his home in Singapore. Mm. Is it Singapore? Yeah, Singapore. And um, the chick he's marrying is pure Asian American for she was born and raised mm. there and they don't like that. Mm. So there's that ca- whole gap between them like born and bred you here, you roots. don't know our tradition. <laughs> da, da, da. You're so American, mm. you believe in the American dream. Da, 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 da. For us we believe in family values. And so the thing about it that's really, really good though, the thing that was making me have a dopest experience in the mm. theater, especially the first time, was that it goes by its title by being crazy rich Asians and they have these scenes showing their wealth that are insane <laughs> and they're so insane mm-hmm. to the extent that they are funny because you're like what why would someone have all that money and even do that they have a wedding ceremony that is so extravagant and it's not of that couple yeah. it is so extravagant it is so funny but even when you watch it you're like killer instagram pictures no? <laughs> killer instagram pictures it's just hilarious those wealth scenes they have a great ass bachelor party which the movie really sets up to that mind blowing moment to happen of these people are rich <laughs> and I really dug that so it has all those tropes and mostly at the end it, it has those pure romance tropes that you know Yeah. and they, I think the corniest thing that I didn't like was they had a dress up scene I think I now I'm about to hate dress up scenes the where like they <laughs> they, put her in, in, they put her in a lot of outfits mm. and then she they're Comes playing out. music mm. and the best montage in mm-hmm. any that that program. needs to be stopped it was by far my worst woman, scene no? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was by far my worst scene in the movie and but otherwise i really dug that movie it's, it's from it's a singapore film mm. or no it's an Amer- it's an american, american film uh, yeah because okay. all of them are speaking english the actor you'll see many people you know mm. yeah. many many people okay. you know but it's funny okay Oh, it has an. Oh no, does don't this, this be there in my <laughs> Okay, really, yeah, don't spoil. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the next thing I watched was a series. Uh, I watched Luke Cage season two, and it was leagues better than like the first season, which was amazing. And it was it was actually interesting because they they introduced us to like like the Jamaican mafia, and that what? was just instantly entertaining. <laughs> instantly entertaining. Mm. Because I, I did not even know that there was a Jamaican mafia in New York mm. also, like, hustling yeah. with guys, and it's so interesting. And, like, the main villain is this dude called Bushmaster, mm. and he's using, like, legit voodoo shit and, like, kicking, kicking Luke Cage's ass, and it's amazing. And it, like, really, like, digs deep into their whole culture 
and doesn't shy away even from their accents and what doesn't put for you subtitles. Mm. And it's even a running joke for a lot of the American mm. characters of like, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which was very interesting. Mm. And it was interesting to see those sort of micro cultures now of black people and how they also yeah, sort that of sounds yeah, good. they're sort of like separating themselves. So it has those interesting political things. Even have a bit of an immigrant thing because even show like the old generation Jamaicans that came in and then mm. the young ones like starting violence and stuff and how they're responding to that yeah. it's very interesting so it like has this sort of intimate focus on this really microcosm of like black culture that we didn't expect so it's like you have the american uh black americans and then you have the caribbean sort of tussling out and mm. you have the caribbeans win over then like the, the, the that part of the city sort of shifts a bit when it's under jamaicans it's very interesting and they have this long standing blood feud that really pays off in an interesting way. It's an interesting revenge plot. Mm. Bushmaster is wow. basically kill Monga, but with like way more time, of course, to develop mm. his character. Mm. I really feel that stuff is like super intimidating. I don't know the actor's name who mm. played the villain, but he's phenomenal. I hope he gets to be in more mm. things. Mm. So overall, this was a very strong season. I was highly entertained. Mm. I don't know why and that's surprising to me, but that's it's nice. surprising to me. <laughs> <laughs> the first season was like it's okay, it's mm. it's like a thing in between mm. to watch, but this one was like legitimately yeah. interesting. Even romance wise, heavy stuff happens. Does he still like, born Jessica Jones? No, I really want him. He's to now boning other people. <laughs> no, he was boning uh, Claire. A chick, a chick who shows but, up in. But <laughs> they're making Claire born everyone. <laughs> 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 yeah, you just. There's pretty much yeah, except she's only she's born everyone except Iron Fist. She That's born dead devil, and she <laughs> born <laughs> and she challenged. him. Okay. Yeah, but what was interesting is now that in Luke Cage was like, okay, so I'm done boning superheroes and treating them. I think I need to like go go out, step step back and figure out my life. And that's the thing. And if like, they were what? making her bone them because yes. she likes boning, I would be like, yeah. <laughs> but but they just it. make her bone them. Yet yeah, it's like they don't know what to do with her, so they're like, bone mm. them. Exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. So she had actually a much bigger character moment than she has had in like the past series. Like they really centered on her at least for the first half of the season, mm. where she sort of realizes she is way too mature for these super powered children <laughs> uh, yeah. that she's like dedicating her life to try and fixing and what. So she just like steps back and chills. And I'm and I'm happy for her. I hope she when she comes back she is doing her own thing and is happy, cool, and well adjusted. So yeah, Look highly highly recommend two. watching that. Yeah, for the Jamaicans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. I think I'll also do the only series I think I have on my list, which is Wild Wild Country. Oh yeah! Have you seen, seen it? I saw you five starring that thing. Oh I'm like, my oh, god! He I was be, murdered I by actually, this stuff. I actually binge watched that thing. <laughs> it's so good. I watched like, the first episode and I was like, "There's no way I'm not going to." Uh, I'll just bring that one here tomorrow. But uh, Wild Wild Country, yeah. it's by Netflix, mm-hmm. and it's a six. It's a, it's a documentary series whereby uh, it has six it has six episodes they divide them they basically they call them parts in the in the narrative yeah. and it follows uh, this how should I do uh, they were basically an eastern medicine cult you get how there's all this yoga these gurus that yeah. came from India and there was this is one of actually probably India's greatest exports yeah. it's called uh, Bhagwan Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh that was and his followers were called the Rajneeshis yeah. mm. so like in the I think it was like probably at the tail end of like the whole hippie era where like I think this whole eastern medicine thing got kind of a revival like in the late 70s no, 70s and 80s mm. early 80s had a revival and there's this guy who had his ashram in India and this guy was pulling in so many foreigners from Europe the US all that but eventually he failed to expand and actually have his commune. He had this dream of building like this yeah. utopia, this commune where everyone would live in harmony with the environment, with harmony with themselves, that kind of thing. Yeah. So they go and buy a huge piece of land in Oregon in the US. And you know this is like country it's like country people basically. They go and <laughs> buy land near this really small town of about 50 people and you know 50 people they are basically I, I don't call them rednecks because they are not but they're country people, you get. They're not people mm. who understand these hippies and these people who are having this free sex life, drugs, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. stuff. So the documentary just basically follows how these guys come, they basically have this conflict between the two of them. Mm. The locals don't want these guys of the cult to come and expand or even 
have <coughs> anything to do with their town, mm. whereas they called for them in the aim of self preservation and actually feeling that they are they have a right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They also keep going. So it basically shows these two opposing sides. Mm. These these hippies okay, I'll call them hippies because they're pretty pretty much like the hippies of the sixties mm. though it they are they they're teaching hippie, hippie stuff, stuff though, though it was eighties yeah. but yeah. it was very much hippie stuff. And this country so it was like this clash of these two worlds. And even again, it, this even this thing brought back a lot of this. I think it works really well now because there's a lot of like immigration stuff in there. Because mm. one of the things they used against the cult was that there was illegal immigration happening and all that. Yeah. So all those things, and even they show how the US used its own power just to suppress these yeah. guys, and how these guys, even if they were small community, yeah. could at least project their power out outwards. So, and I was actually shocked because unlike most cult movies, we, we barely see anything <coughs> from this god man, the, the mm-hmm. Bhagwan. He had this secretary, and there's this chick called Man and Sheila, who was basically this firebrand chick who, oh my God. who was running everything. And then yeah. again, they bring in the interpersonal stuff of her and Bhagwan and how their relationship evolved to yeah. the end. It was really good. And for me, it was this interest in like religion and cults and belief, that whole thing. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. really great to see. And it was very weird because most times when you see things about cults, mm. when you see people in the future, they'll probably say, man, we messed up, man, why did we do this? But yeah, you could see guys were actually emotional. They were like, man, these guys, these guys messed us up. You get us? They, how, how could they do this to this holy man or something of the sort? Yeah. Yeah. So it was a very interesting take on cults and all that. Yeah. Six episodes, you should watch it. It's really yeah. good. Ma Anand Sheila Ma Anand is Sheila. insane. So, yeah. she does, she's also a talking head, so she's yeah. super fascinating. It was great having those people, like having the actual guys. Ma I did think. Mm. Usually, cult things. Some are talking, man. Those guys, they burnt themselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This time, the guys were actually there. They had and gone they through like, it, and like you see them how they're on the other side, and they still had out of respect for this good man of theirs. Yeah. But yeah. the drama in between was what yeah. really got me because it was riveting stuff, by the way. Cool. Yeah. Um, let me also do the TV show that mm. I have. Mm. It's mm-hmm. different from you guys. I was just telling Joel about it. It's a series called On My Block. It's a Netflix series. I saw it by accident on Twitter when someone I was following mentioned it. Mm. And it's about uh, black kids and Hispanic kids in like a neighborhood in, in, in America, which is like a ghetto neighborhood. And they're young. They're 14. Mm. So the way I asked it to Joel is the same way I would say. If you liked any of those Disney shows, those of Wizards of Waverly Place, those of Miley Cyrus, like... What mm-hmm. it is is like that version of kid stuff, mm-hmm. but a conscious one. Mm-hmm. There's still a lot of humor. They're super conscious. They even talk about wokeness a lot. Mm-hmm. Then they're struggling with gang stuff and, of course, with, with romance mm-hmm. stuff. It is so flawed. Like the lead actor who is supposed to carry all the emotion. That boy carries all the emotion. He's by far the worst actor in the whole <laughs> so bad but it is still it still remains so endearing and that's how those shows were on Disney those people did not know mm. how to act yeah, but you yeah. would enjoy the shit out of that mm. stuff so that's how that show it is to be but it is so enjoyable binge watch it on a day when you really are, are not into something that's so brainy and all mm. and you want to just relax it's like yeah. 8 episodes <coughs> I think I like it enough to have watched it twice so I'm really into it you should check it out Tim you want to pick your call? no Okay, so on my block is my third choice. Not much to say because I'm sure you guys haven't watched it. Um, yeah. Third choice, t- Joel. Cool. My ne- my third choice is again a TV series, Iron Fist, season two. What's Joel? <laughs> it's my last comic book related thing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one I watched recently. It has literally just come out like last week it or like out. two but weeks as ago. It's hush hush. Is it bad? Huh? No, not like it's not like Iron Fist one. Jesus, Iron Fist, <laughs> Iron Fist season one was one of the worst things ever, but Iron Fist two has stepped it up to average, like acceptable levels. It's finally watchable, which I'm very excited for. Mm. The biggest selling point mm. in social media and stuff was like, oh my god, our fight choreography is awesome. This season we had, I forget what famous Hollywood stunt choreographer they hired, mm. but he's done like some big movies, and they're like. Yeah, we've had this guy to like direct our fight scenes and our fight scenes are awesome. And yeah, they were good. You could actually follow what was happening. It was like that old school sort of Hong Kong style fighting, which which was also relevant because it's it takes place in Chinatown. And I love I also really loved this season for all the Asians it hired. Jesus Christ. It's like 
It's like maybe five or six white people in the entire season. The rest is just Chinese, like Chinese triads, his Chinese girlfriend. It's amazing. It's like you will be messed up not making him Asian. They fucked that I'm going up. To, I'm going to, I'm going to get to that. Up. I'm going to get to that. First of all, <laughs> the original Iron Fist is a white guy mm-hmm. from the comics. Mm-hmm. So me being a comic book guy, Daniel Rand is a white dude. Mm-hmm. Now the way I felt they tried to, because they probably took that that criticism from where, from wherever, given the times that we're living in, they tried to address that by really making it more centered now in like Asian culture that makes and involving more me. Asian people and blah 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 blah, which I didn't need to do. Yeah, in my opinion. It's like it's like it's the same argument really with Doctor Strange as well. It's, it's a sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. There's no way you're going to work out pleasing everybody. <laughs> anyway, sorry so for you, putting yeah. in that suckers. Just I mean, yeah, you just do your best. What you, what yeah, you but liked. the way okay, I was going to say the way it resolves is what actually because I was completely away from that sucker when I watched mm. it. I didn't even know it was there. But the way the show ends. I was like, oh, that's... Because like, it ends and they, they basically hand his power over to an Asian character. And that really disturbed me. I was like, why are you giving this to... And I was like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> so that, that pleased... I hope someone somewhere is pleased. <laughs> so you didn't like it? No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like it. Not, not, in, not in terms of like, oh, this is bad storytelling. I hated it in like a character kind of thing. Because he's going through like a whole character arc. There's a reason he handed over. But the person he handed over to those powers too is a person that's very capable. She's yeah, been a staple they just of the like show. it for that. So, Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I liked it. No, no, no. I mean, I thought. I mean, you can't avoid thinking about it now, given the stuff outside. But yeah, within the context of the story, it did make sense, and it's fine. That's so, but it's going to sort of have that that issue that the Flash, ha- the, the show, the Flash has, where it's giving everyone speed powers. It's sort of. It seems like it's going in that direction of everyone now has a bunch of people are going to have iron fist powers, mm. and that has. It could get into like really stupid territory. Anyway, it was a step up from the first one, so it's worth it's worth a watch. Okay. Yeah. Your third choice. I think I'll continue with this discussion. I'll I'll drop Isle of Dogs. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, we can talk about, about it. Also, also, last week. Last week. Mm. You did. I mean, the last what we've been serious? watching. Yeah. But I have to ask, like this whole thing of the rest we've been talking, whitewashing yeah, yeah. and all that. Mm. And I, I realize that has been like a big issue with that movie, with the yeah. white savior and all that. Mm. What did you guys think? I've not been into. I only heard about that circus on like mm. the surface mm. level of like why when the dog speaking Japanese mm. or whatever. Mm. But I, in hearing that now, I don't really feel she was a savior. Like mm. for me, I was more following like Chief's story. Yeah. yeah. And, and like how, yeah, like, like how he was, he was changing from a stray to being like a tame dog, which I didn't really dig into as much mm. what the connotations of mm. that are, of giving up freedom and mm. for like to have a master and master. stuff. Um, but I was more into like his story and how she seemed like more of a side character. She was more of like a mouthpiece mm. of like, oh, there's this conspiracy, yeah. like, we need to unravel this. But I feel like the animals and the little well, the pilot no boy, yeah. Well, like I, be, I feel like the pilot kid, especially the one driving yeah. the story, crashes there yeah. looking for his dog. He's like doing mm. all this stuff actively, so it's not like she swoops in and's like, "Everybody, stop! Let's mm. not hurt him." He mm. like even marches forward, gives a speech at the end. So I felt like she was in the background, and anyway, for the most part, for me, she was she was not like that sort of invasive, like main character of a win save Japan or whatever. Mm. I feel like for the most part it was still a Japanese centric thing. As for the as for the dog thing, I don't really see the issue with. I I just saw it as a clever way of like having the disparity between the way humans speak yeah. and the way dogs speak, and like you trying to understand. And if you're an English speaker, mm. you're so like you 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 with the pets now, like trying to figure out what the Japanese mm. guys are talking about and getting context clues. So I thought that was okay, and it's Wes Anderson is doing mm. his quirky, weird yeah. stuff. Exactly, that's something. As actually. always, it's like I appreciated the film. Yeah, it was well done. I watched it from beginning to end. I wasn't really bored, but 
I don't know. Maybe I, I don't feel that emotion anymore. Like, yeah. I think maybe Moonrise Kingdom, even Grand Budapest. Like, actually, I like the movie. Like, it's a nice movie, but I didn't really go into it. But like a movie like Moonrise Kingdom now, I think it was something where there's a bit more emotion. I don't know. This one, like this Isle of Dogs, yeah, was a good film. I enjoyed maybe because I'm an, I'm a Wes Anderson fan. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like the emotion is. I think I maybe think, I don't yeah. know. Maybe it needs to do something different because. Yeah. I found, I found an emotional connection more in the aesthetics mm. of just these dogs look like complete crap mm. and I really enjoyed that because that's that's not a common sort of visual in those issues. Mm. You only see cutesy dogs mm. in like an animated feature mm. film and these were like some raggedy mm. like yeah. <laughs> and sure yeah. diseased yeah. <laughs> dogs I like that they're sneezing all the time mm. yeah the aesthetics of like the world he created I enjoyed but yeah I'll agree it's not his like it's not like the strongest. Yeah, it's, not, it's, not it's just like it's, it's not just anywhere. like okay, yeah, and okay. then it's yeah, yeah. No, no, no. yeah. Well, I liked it more than Fantastic Mr. Fox. I really liked it you more did. than many of his movies, and I actually mm. found emotion. I think the dogs were a high selling point for me. Mm. Mm. I liked their design. I thought they were really cute. I liked when he would make them cry. He kept repeating that that mm. I think, and I, it, I kept falling for mm. it every time he would do it. <laughs> and I found it so clever the way he would make sure he doesn't make the characters speak mm. where he's doing it for mm. himself because he has set himself in a world where mm. he's, he's not also, letting them yeah. be Chinese but I found the ways he was working around it really clever yeah okay cool. last we are going to do honorable mention so we do the long picks um, let me see for first uh, what do I want to do first I watched Predator and I didn't re- I didn't like it just putting it out mm-hmm. there but I went with someone, a friend of mine, Reggie, and she really dug it. She really, really liked mm. it. So maybe you're Reggie, mm. and maybe you're me. <laughs> Who knows? You're one of <laughs> one of each. But it's a super slasher film. I don't know. It's there. Mm. Then I rewatched Guys. I rewatched Love and Basketball. Meanwhile, <laughs> point to note: this year, the only movies I watch which I know are bad, like mm. the way you'd watch Skyscraper, mm. strictly on rom-coms. I'm not allowing those as a thing <laughs> because I've rejected this mm. genre for so long. I need to find get back to history. Mm. I rewatch Love and Basketball, and you get that movie. It's like good. Mm. Can you imagine? Because I haven't seen the two of, you've not seen it before in, in years, your life. No, in years, like, in years. Because, years. because yeah. I forgot mm. that mm. both of them were basketballers. Yeah. Even her, she's a basketball and she has so much agency. And the thing that kills me is how much they were showing her as a basketball player. Mm. And then they'd show how little uh, a crowd that the girl's basketball has. Mm. Then they show him in his basketball career mm. going to pro mm. basketball. Then for her, by then the NBA hadn't yet been formed. So she had to go to Spain to mm. play the basketball. Then by the time she comes back now, they had started the WNBA. Mm. Yeah. It is dope. Like mm. even in those outside elements, they really paid attention to that. And also, they have a sex scene and they pull out a condom. I was like, what? You know people <laughs> barely show us the actual, mm, condom. actual condom. But that movie is it's actually double. good. Yeah. It's actually good. And I watched it thinking I was going to watch ooh, one of those old things mm. which I like, but it's so lame. It's not. Mm, it's yeah. not lame at all. No, Just a reminder. Okay. Others um, support the girls. It's also, it also has... Um, I don't just, just get the movie if you see it. Support <laughs> yeah. the girls. Uh, the the TV show Kidding it has Jim Carrey give it a try mm. I really <laughs> like it I'll talk about it when is the it, season is, is the over he's the lead mm. yeah, I'll talk about it when the season is over I think in our next what mm. we've been watching but it's so good mm, yeah, there's a no let me not talk about it <laughs> wow. Joel what are you <laughs> Joel what are you uh, mine is uh, Bleach it's like a Netflix original movie based on an anime series <laughs> Which is why I didn't bring it up because no one would know what the hell I'm mm. talking about. <laughs> but yeah, it was Joel, I actually know what you're talking <laughs> you do? about. But anime is big in UG. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean. I used to be in an anime group on Facebook, and they would, I hope I went out. Oh, they stopped showing me their stuff, but they would talk about Bleach a lot and Naruto and One Piece and da 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 da. One Punch Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would see Bleach. Yeah. They made a live action of it. Yeah, they made a live action series movie. or movie. No, movie. it's a movie. Unfortunately, it has one of the best casts I've seen in a film. The film is not perfect by any means, but in terms of casting people based off of cartoon characters, they did a fantastic mm. job. Any name we know? Uh no, they're all Japanese. Japanese. Names. I, don't, I don't even know. That's what mm. I loved was a full Japanese mm. cast. Because when we speaking had English or they no, were Japanese, full on Japanese, Japanese based in Japan. Yeah. 
Yeah, because we were worried they had mentioned they would do a movie like five years ago. Warner Brothers was like, we're going to do a British movie, and people were like, crap, we're going to put it in New York mm. with like <laughs> random Americans. Mm. But to their credit, they gave it to Warner Brothers Japan, and they ah. did things over there. So, the well Asian market, The Asian market is really huge these days. They can yeah. sustain their own thing. They really yeah, so it's a pleasant mm. And what's, I really enjoyed What's the myself. one with writing in the book where they... Death Note. Yeah. yeah where they did America. Yeah, I hate they that. Can't. That was horrible. <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, Tomb Raider. I uh, shouldn't have watched that. Mm. Um, next one is... <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was the one with the, what's her name, Vikanda. Yeah. Mm. It was yeah, that was that was tragic for me because she's a very talented <laughs> actress, and I held on the entire movie just for her, mm. just to see if she, they would give her like a small moment where she could act. But that never came. It was just a complete trash <laughs> action movie. Just I have, I have nothing else to say. Don't watch it. Uh, next one, next one I watched is uh, Andre the Giant, which was an HBO the documentary. The HBO documentary. It. Is it good? It's so good, man. I recommend that. Uh, next one was who, who is America? I'm sure the whole world has heard about that. Mm, I don't who watch America, it, but I, I always mean, see uh, so much about it. Yeah, I watched. I watched the entire season. There's some really, some really, really entertaining stuff in there. I don't like the show really, and so on. Not into it. Yeah, it's. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's his show, I've met it. <laughs> and I'm actually, I'm yeah, happy. and I mean, I'm generally in her boat. Mm. I couldn't stand Borat, or really, yeah, yeah. Like it's just not my humor. <laughs> it just yeah. refused to land. It's yeah. just that sort of gross, mm. super absurd thing. I was like, eh. Mm. But here you had the benefit of these actual political figures that you know, not just political mm. figures, but like artists, like these affluent people being tricked into saying the most idiotic say, say, saying or doing the most idiotic things mm. and that like the mind games are the most interesting thing that you'll ever see he like convinces guys to, like rape a trump doll a trump blow up doll on screen mm-hmm. like give it a three-way and just <laughs> which kind of, which kind of see, show is this you see, <laughs> <laughs> you see psychology of how he gets guys yeah. there I, I highly recommend that show it's mm. it's one of those event level things where you just have to see just like live uncut stuff so it's very interesting to see mm-hmm. i highly recommend you watch that show as a non sasha baron Cohen <laughs> fan i've been seeing about that show and i'm not interested yeah um, are you are do you have other picks um i don't know i guess we've, so we've talked about isle of dogs mm-hmm. i think we talked about horse glory as well i thought that was horse glory you watched yeah i watched yeah. it finally we I talked about it, it yeah, i think yeah, last yeah, yeah. year yeah it was very interesting mm-hmm. And then I also watched Whose Streets, which was also mm. very intense. I watched it twice actually, mm. once alone and watch once with friends. Mm. Yeah, very intense. Yeah, but it was really good. Very, right? Yeah, very good, good documentary yeah. film. Yeah, very good you coverage. Watched it, I'll watch it. You should, you should. Yeah, and that's all my picks. Okay. My list real quick. Um, I finally watched Felicity. Oh yeah. Yeah, but then I understood because I, I really liked the first half of the film because it related to a script some guy had given me. Someone was trying to do a similar script mm-hmm. here, and you do that whole thing with <coughs> your hustling yeah. just to get your kid treated and all that. Yeah. yeah. And I really loved the movie up up until the point when that kind of stopped being an issue. Yeah. When they cut the leg, and now she's now trying to, I don't know. Maybe it was the 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 story having almost two different halves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I enjoyed it. At least up until the half point, it was riveting stuff. Yeah, I agree. Uh, another thing. Do you I'll guys think we should do an episode on it? Felicity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I suppose we can do it. Yeah. I know. I'm sure we have a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah we there should be we, stuff we've done. all back. just said I watched it. Yeah, well, but and we keep we <laughs> yeah, hold back. Yeah, we hold back. <laughs> Yet it was one of our yeah. most you guys. Yes, most. <laughs> <laughs> when Joe when Joe came from Facebook, when, oh, when, yeah, when yeah, Joe yeah, came yeah. from Facebook, <laughs> we're like we got that movie. So I think we, we need to pull through with it. <laughs> yeah, could, could be a nice African film for yeah. sure. For sure, it's not available. Uh, Another movie I'll mention. Uh, I watched Blockers. Yeah, yeah, mm. raunchy comedy, Jada you, Patel stuff. It's a popcorn, yeah. it's a popcorn movie. It's good popcorn. Yeah, good. yeah, another one I'll put uh, American Animals. Oh, yeah, I want yeah. to watch that. Yeah, I watched American Animals recently. Yeah, actually, mm. uh, actually, it took me a while because it has like this whole documentary segment where they're interviewing the real people, then mm. they go to the yeah, other. So it's like documentary, yeah, slash documentary, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was actually good. I like the style, the style bit of it. Uh, another one, Tally. 
Shaz- oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a good film. I enjoyed it. The last mm-hmm. one I'll mention is <coughs> Too Funny to Fail. Did you see it? Yeah. Uh, no, too Funny to Fail, the, mm-hmm. the Life and Death of the Dana Carvey Show. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay, then that's our episode, guys. Mm. This is what we've been watching. Mm-hmm. And um, next week, um, I'm going to talk to Anne Kiria. She's a lady who has a web series. I have forgotten its name right is it now. Is it Yes, it? Yeah. it's a web series called Masao, <coughs> mm. and it takes place in taxis. It shows the funny bit bits showing, going in taxis. So you're looking you? at me like you've not heard of it in your life. Yeah, okay, I will send it to you. <laughs> yeah, it, so the, 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 the clips are really short, mm. and she is, uh, yeah, we've never had anyone who has had a web series before. Mm. And she's fighting the good fight of yeah, trying man. that. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to her and see what that takes. To oh. do. Okay. Hope it will be fun. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Be. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you will watch the stuff we've talked about. I hope if you've watched, you enjoyed hearing us talk about it. Yeah. This is our episode. We're Cinema Red Till. I'm Sharon. I'm Timothy. I'm Joe. Um, check our website, our social media pages, Cinema Red Till for updates and everything else. Bye.